and welcome to a special episode of the Geek Bites here, brought to you by the Geek Buddies! <gasps> hey! hey! Yeah. Yeah. We're back. I almost did the uh, Shannon McClung uh, Buddies, but I didn't. I, I remember he's back now to hang out with us. Uh, oh, but... I listen. I listened to the. I listened to the last episode. Spot on. <laughs> Spot on impersonation. Best I could do. Best I could do. It's like gravelly all the way in the back and lean back. So, but uh, we're here to talk about the Oscars. A real quick uh, video here to give our thoughts, overall thoughts on the Oscars, the highlights, the lowlights, the winners, the losers, the things that stood out to us, things that didn't, that could have worked better. Uh, and we're going to have a fun conversation about that. But just well, let's, uh, for those of you who might have stumbled upon us for the first time, let's introduce ourselves. I am the outlaw John Roker, writer, producer, and host here on the Geek Buddies. Hi, I'm Michael Vogel. I'm a writer and producer of animated TV shows and movies. And this is Shannon McClung. I'm a television actor and an animation writer where you can see some of our current work every weekend on YouTube with the third season of Strawberry Shortcake Fairy in the Big City. And you can see the first two seasons not only on YouTube, but on Netflix. Wow. There you go. Get on it, people. Get on the Strawberry Shortcake bandwagon, for God's sakes. Uh, and, of course, uh, Michael will be going to the awards show later on this week, the GLAAD Awards, to represent... Strawberry Shortcake and his career. They're going to be a lot of fun. Mikey was showing us the suit before we started. Mike, are you looking forward to this award show? I am, I am looking forward to representing my career. Yes. At the Glad <laughs> Awards. Um, can't, can't wait to represent that career. Um, no, it'll be I fun. Know. It's going to be a good time. Strawberry Shortcake, like I said, has been nominated three times now yeah. um, in the younger children's category. And it's great. Um, love that we get to have so much representation in Barry in the Big City and glad that we get to go hang out at GLAAD and see how it goes. Um, With looking two forward to doing some hobnobbing, a couple other animation Ooh. friends that I know are gonna be there. And uh, nice. who knows who else I'm gonna see. Maybe maybe this is the night, guys. Maybe this is the night that I fall in love. Maybe this is the hey. night that I, find, that I find Mr. Wright at the GLAAD Awards. <laughs> Waiting for tonight. All right, let's talk about the Oscars here. Uh, I'll just, you know what? I'll just bring up an overall picture. Seven Oscars for Oppenheimer. Best picture, director, actor, supporting actor. Uh, editor and more uh, Jimmy Kimmel hosted this event full of some interesting moments like as you see on the screen there John Cena's nude scene uh, we also had uh, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger Danny DeVito and Michael Keaton bringing us back to the days of the Batman time uh, we had previous winners announcing the nominees uh, we had some controversy over Lily Gladstone not winning and Emma Stone winning as you see there although she delivered a wonderful speech I'm just Ken was an incredible performance as well, we had uh, John Mulaney summarizing Field of Dreams for a lot of <laughs> us. Uh, Dave, I enjoyed Randolph, delivered a wonderful speech uh, uh, when she won for Best Supporting Actress. Emily Blunt, Ryan, and uh, Ryan uh, Gosling had a wonderful back and forth about Barbenheimer, which I thought was fantastic. I really love the design overall of the Oscars. We had a wonderful bit with Kate McKinnon and America Ferreira there as well. But we also had some controversy over the In Memoriam uh, segment as well. And Pacino, hoo my eyes say Oppenheimer, fumbling the best picture announcement. So, uh, Michael, what's your overall feeling uh, uh, about the Oscars here? Uh, wh what do you take away from it? What did you enjoy? What did you not enjoy? What are your thoughts? Overall, I had a really good time. I, yeah. you know, the Oscars have had a bumpy few years thanks to the pandemic. Uh, <laughs> was, you know, like there was a couple of years there where we were like, I yeah. guess this is an award show. Yeah. Um, yeah. and it was nice to just see the Oscars back in form. And I think what's particularly fun, absolutely, Oppenheimer was the big winner of the night. Oppenheimer, yeah. you know, took the awards, but it wasn't one of those full sweeps. Like I feel like all the movies of this year got a little bit of love yeah. um, and got some really nice representation, got some wins. And honestly, Barbie kind of came out of the Oscars as one of the bigger winners of the night. Oh. I mean, not necessarily from an award standpoint, sure. but I mean, I, I'm just Ken pretty much stole the entire evening, but yeah. even beyond that, all the conversation about what a big movie Barbie was, like like you were mentioning, the Emily Blunt, Ryan Gosling bit, like Greta yeah. Gerwig front and center, like it, Margot right. Robbie getting all of the credit, not just for playing Barbie, but for producing the movie and really bringing that movie to life. And I just think that, you know, it's one of those things, it's not really about who wins the award. Winning the award is great. Who doesn't yes. want to win an Oscar? But what's really important is being a part of the pop culture conversation. And I think mm -hmm. what the Oscars showed is Barbie really was that. Um, yeah, I mean, I had a great time all the way. Honestly, my one critique, and it's just the one thing that will one. always wow. irk me. I have one critique. Every, I actually liked everything. I'm, okay. I liked the in memoriam. I liked everything. But my one critique 
and it will always be my critique is I thought Jimmy Kimmel did a great job. I think Jimmy Kimmel is probably the best Oscar host we've had since Billy Crystal. I would agree with that. But every time they make a goddamn joke about that animation category being for kids, I want to throw a chair through a window. Like it, there was the year that Chris Rock came out to announce oh. the best animated feature Ooh. and said that voiceover work was easy because he just got to stand there and speak. Yeah. And then this year, Jimmy Kimmel being like, hey, it's the best feature animated feature nominee. You let your kids uh, fill this one out. Yeah, let's see who they picked. And I'm like, and look, Jimmy Kimmel is great. So I, this yeah. is not a fuck you, Jimmy Kimmel, I hate you. It's just the let's not make that joke about animated features anymore. I mean, yeah. Boy and the Heron is like one of the biggest movies in Japan. And Miyazaki is Japan's biggest director of all time. And Across the Spider-Verse was hands down one of the top 10 movies of this year, animated or otherwise. So kind of, let's just let, let's just stop that joke. Let's come yeah. up with a new joke. That's my own, but that's my only critique. Other than that, I had a blast. I love the movies. <laughs> As Robert Downey Jr. might have say, if you were sitting there with Robert Downey Jr., you might have also given Kimmel the, uh, let's move it along here when he was making <laughs> that. <movie. laughs> Although that was, I mean, I mean, I get why I get why RDJ didn't like that joke. Yes. But it was a good joke. It was a good joke. <laughs> it was a I good think, joke. I think you want to clear it with the guy you're going to make the joke about. But of course, later on, they were hugging and, and smiling with each other and, and laughing. So, uh, and I can't let you get away with that slander. Uh, Akira Kurosawa is Japan's greatest director. I think Miyazaki's Japan's greatest animation director. I'll give you that one. How about that? Okay, um, sure. <laughs> Miyazaki is the best animation director in a country where animation is by far the most popular art form of cinema that they have. Based on box office. <laughs> I'm going to let Japanese people chime in on that in the comment section. Shannon, your overall thoughts on this uh, award show, sir. I know you love to watch these, and you were, I know you were at work, but then watch them later or watch uh, the rest of the ones that you missed Poor, later. So Poor McClung thoughts? was getting all of the text messages during the Oscars <laughs> while he was at work. <laughs> but, but, to, but to your all's credit... Um, you, you were giving me, you were giving me those texts with, with a lack of context. Yes. yes. So, like it was a comment on what was happening yes. versus what actually happened. So I got to, I got to have some surprises along the way. Um, our, our dear friend, Jonathan Gabay at one point during Kimmel's opening speech said, my God, did Shannon write this? And I'm like, all right, so there's some solid, there's some solid jokes coming down the pipe. I know that. I mean, um, your, your ghost is as good as mine. That was your a great ghost is as good as mine. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's, that's a great joke. Um, yeah, I mean, like I, I got towards the end. I, I got home just in time to see Paul Giamatti get robbed, the best actor. Wow. Um, but, uh, but overall, like going back and watching them, um, I, I, I really enjoyed them. I mean, I, I think award shows the last few years have become kind of, less and less important to me that I watch them. Like if, mm. I, if I'm scheduled to work, it's like, ah, like I don't request the day off so I can go go to a party anymore. Um, after this year, I was like, ah, man, this would have been a nice year to have taken the day off because yeah. this was this was a lot of fun. Um, I do agree. I think Jimmy Kimmel has been our most consistent host since Billy Crystal. That being said, watching Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt go off on each other in their stunt, right their precursor to the stunt, um, stunt salute, yeah. I'm like, man have these two do it i mean you know i i feel like i feel like they had the right idea with the experiment yeah. of franco and Anne hathaway and that experiment oh. went horribly wrong um but i'm like having these two yeah. having gosling and blunt i'm like it's it's so interesting how you can get a terrific actor you can get a terrific comedic performer they get up and present and they're awkward and they're weird and they don't know what to do yeah. um these two just knew what to do yeah. And maybe it's because they paid a little more attention at rehearsal or or they are just naturally funny and naturally have a great chemistry together. And even though I know people do like Jimmy Kimmel and he had some good jokes, he had some ones that fell flat. But, you know, again, that's not all him. Some of that's the writing. Right. Um, but but I think I think having a movie star who has the chops to host host the Oscars to me makes a lot of sense. Um, love the, love the Schwarzenegger, Danny oh, DeVito bit. I have so watched much. that 20 times. Um, yeah. every time my wife hears me pull it up, she's like, again? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be consistent until next year. You son of uh, a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Batman, that son of a bitch. It wasn't even <laughs> his Batman for God. It thing. wasn't <laughs> even his Batman. I wanted to <laughs> joke about that. Hey, it looks different. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh but also i love godzilla minus one winning i love yeah, yeah, japanese yeah. artists getting up all of them 
holding a, a, a Godzilla figurine, the one who the, the one artist who actually spoke, how he ha had to give his figurine to another one of his co-artists. I, I thought that that moment was just mm -hmm. really, really sweet and really, really authentic. And in his in his uh, in his broken English, the the beautiful speech that he made, talking Agreed. about it, the things yeah. that he got to watch as a kid, thinking. Well, me being in Japan, I'm so far away from this. I'll never be able to do this. And then watching it happen and him saying me like I'm standing here now. I was like, that's that's freaking beautiful. Like there, yeah. there were a lot of beautiful speeches. Um, but yeah, overall, I, I really enjoyed this year. Yeah, I have to say the same. I, I had such a great time. I did my live watch along and like I had 400 people watching with me and I was really shocked at how many people were going to were watching with me. And it's, it spoke to the fact that people wanted to see a good ceremony, right? They wanted to see if maybe this one would be better than, of course, some of the stuff we got last year. Uh, you know, it, it, Kimmel made a nice reference to it and moved on past it, which I thought was a smart way to do it. And the overall feeling was I thought this was a nice return to a respect, a, a somewhat of a dignity, noble approach to the Oscars, mixed in with some modern humor, some modern takes on things. I mean, having John Cena come out, being full on naked, I thought was a genius, ballsy decision. This could have literally, ah. <laughs> this could have absolutely fell apart. It's a high wire act, but when you have someone like Kimmel who knows how to play off of it, I thought that was really smart. Yeah. And yeah, I agree with you guys. Kimmel did a wonderful job here. Yeah, yeah, the Robert Downey Jr. stuff. Okay, maybe a couple of missteps. And if you're an, if you're a pro Trump person, maybe you didn't like that tweet thing. But overall, I thought he absolutely nailed it, dealt with all the changes, and brought us in under time. I mean, he's like Clint Eastwood out there bringing it in under budget. I was really surprised at how incredible he was able to move and deal with all the changes. The stuff with Guillermo I thought was really funny as well. That was the right time to put it, uh, and I, it worked so well. Seeing all the different pairings, I thought the pairings worked uh, overall, except for the Melissa McCarthy, Octavia Spencer pairing. I thought every other pairing 100% worked and had some nice back and forths. Between them, you mentioned Emily Blunt, Ryan Reynolds, all of that was great. And the pacing of it all, that's just kind of worked for me. And seeing Oppenheimer win seven awards, I think was great because it showed that, as Michael said, there isn't a juggernaut. There were a lot of really good films that came out in 2023, and those films had a chance to shine throughout the night. I mean, Poor Things really got, I think, a huge push. A lot of love. Right from this from this ceremony, as you mentioned, Godzilla minus one and other and Barbie, other films here getting a little chance to shine through different times throughout the night. And I thought that was really great. Beautiful speeches, some really strong political speeches at the right time when they won their awards. It was a perfect time to deliver the the the, the comments that they delivered, whether you agree with them or not. I thought that was the right time, so they limited that kind of stuff. Robert Downey Jr. winning, I thought, was wonderful as well. Uh, I thought Emma Stone delivered a beautiful speech. Dave, I enjoyed Randolph as well. Killian, very clear about it. And Christopher Nolan. I thought Nolan delivered a really nice speech about it all once he won Best Director, finally. So, yeah, overall, really, really great stuff. What are some of the um, highlights for you, Shannon, uh, that uh, stood out besides the Arnold, and which I thought was obviously great? But is there uh, any other things that you want to pinpoint or hit or, or maybe some, uh, some uh, awards that didn't work out the way you were hoping they'd work out? Well, Gosling and Blunt doing a stunt salute. Like there, there has yeah. been a, a a movement over the last several years trying to get a best stunt category, and I and I yeah. think that that is a category they should add, and I think it's way overdue. And having those two come out, and the fact that like like yeah, they're they're about to star in the Fall Guy that comes out, at, you know, first big movie of the summer, and they actually didn't yeah. they didn't even say anything about the Fall Guy. I thought that was funny, <laughs> um, but but I do feel like that's I, I feel like that Oscar category. I feel like that's long overdue, and that needs to be added. Yeah. Um, in terms of how they um, pr uh, announce the uh, nominees for the acting awards, bringing out five previous winners, uh, yeah. assigning a previous winner uh, um, with with a nominee, I thought that was really really nice, and especially when the two when the pairing when they have a personal relationship like you can mm -hmm. tell you can kind of tell when they didn't and that's fine because the the relationship that they have is that they they were getting to stand on that stage they were nominated yeah. for this giant award um so i thought that was a really nice way that was a really nice way to go um i like killian murphy's speech i just I, and i thought he did an incredible job in oppenheimer i just really wanted paul giamatti to win i thought uh, for, for my money paul giamatti's performance was the best, the best of the year. Hmm. Um, loved Dave on Joy Randolph's speech. I mean, that was a beautiful, oh, yeah. beautiful speech. 
Um, I, I, I do think they missed the mark with best actress. I, I think th- and wow. that's not to take anything away from Emma Stone. Okay. Um, I, I just think that I was like, yeah, they kind of missed the mark. And I think a lot of people are, are playing, you know, armchair quarterback or Monday morning quarterback saying like, well, Lily Gladstone really should have been up for best supporting. It's like, eh, well, that's in hindsight when, after she didn't win, that's a great theory to posit. Well, and, and, uh, and it's not, it's not like she would have beaten Devine, Devine Joy Randolph. I, that's, that's assuming she would have beaten Devine Joy Randolph, which was no guarantee at all. Yeah. I mean, who knows? I mean, yeah. again, me not being the biggest Poor Things fan, I was not a well, huge fan of the love the that it that got. The part, the part that, that I the saw. <laughs> yeah, saw. yeah. The movie couldn't even keep me in my seat. <laughs> um, the fact that <laughs> Poor Things won production design over Barbie, I thought was kind of crazy. Um, wow. But but okay. but again, they brought Barbie world. Look at the shirt you're wearing, pal. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you listen, you're... I love Barbie. Yeah. Love Barbie, but I still have I still have cinematic taste as well. So uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking for the Bella Baxter merchandise in, in in the background. I'm not uh, not not seeing anything. Wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for anything that I could like. Yeah, that's right. You, you got nothing. You got nothing, pal. <laughs> um, but but I mean that that was the big thing. Um, I love Cord Jefferson's speech. Oh. Um, Oh, yes. for American fiction. American fiction. Great. Um, right. Even though, like, I didn't, I didn't love the movie. I loved half the movie. Um, but I loved his speech. I loved the whole idea that you know Hollywood is a risk averse industry. You know, a two hundred million dollar movie that's a risk. Why don't you take that money and make twenty movies? Why don't you? You know, I mean, I think, I think that was such a elegant way to put it. And you can tell he even said he's like, you know, I've had to deal with some some anger in the past, and 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 the way that he 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 put that statement out there. I'm like, that is exactly the right way to do it. And I think he's right. I mean, I think, I think there's a lot of money left on the table because they don't, they don't fund as many um, smaller budgeted movies as they used to. Right. Fair point. Michael, what are your thoughts on this? And then what are some of the other highlights or lowlights of the night that you want to make sure we hit on here in this discussion? Um, I mean, Devine Joy Joy Randolph's speech was amazing. The best part about it was when she thanked her publicist and then announced that (laughs) I know I'm not supposed to thank my publicist, but I don't care. Y'all don't have my publicist. (laughs) I love like that was just a great moment. That was a great moment to me. Um, oh, and real quick, the background of that is because David Allen Greer made an announcement. It was great last night, David. Oh, that night, David yeah. Allen Greer was great. He made an announcement before the award started to everybody, saying, "We want to get through the award show quickly. Please don't thank your publicist, your costume designer, your stylist, or anything like that." And of course, Dave, I'm the first one to win, breaks the rule. I love it. <laughs> and, and, but like the way she broke it, because like the reason they say that, and it's absolutely accurate, is what's very boring is a show where everybody gets up and just lists off names. Yes, like we right. love those speeches that really move us. And I think this this year. David Allen Greer getting up to announce that worked because so many yeah. of the speeches were so heartfelt and were actually about something. Yeah. The way that she did it was perfect because it was like, yep, now that was funny. That was good. <laughs> right. um, kind of to your point about all of the pairings, this makes me feel old, but I also really enjoyed it, is that when you were a kid watching the Oscars and like, you know, like Catherine Hepburn, H- Hepburn would come out with somebody or so, like, you'd be like, oh yeah, there's those older people that were in movies before <laughs> I started watching movies. And now you get, you know, you get Michael Keaton and Catherine O'Hara get come out together and you're like, hey, it's Beetlejuice <laughs> and Delia Dietz. Like Arnold and Danny DeVito come out and you're like, ah, it's Mr. Freeze and the Penguin. And you're like, those movies are the old movies. <laughs> These are the parents. I, 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 your sister's child goes, oh yeah, those are the old people when I started watching movies. <laughs> Well, because our friend, our friend Ross, uh, uh, Ross and Marissa brought their daughter yeah. Mackenzie, and Mackenzie oh. was like, "Who's that? Who's yeah. that? Oh. You. Uh. You. Why is the vulture with Moira Rose?" <laughs> um, yeah, but it's, no, it's always yeah. And Ross kept sending his daughter over because she was like, "Well, what's poor things about?" And he was like, "Go ask Uncle Michael." <laughs> I had to explain to her what poor. Th- I had to explain to her poor things: Oppenheimer and Godzilla minus one. Wait, should she be knowing to a child? Such a young age. <laughs> To a child, I, wow. I did it appropriately. Okay. Um, so I, so I really did. I, I I enjoyed the pairings. As we already said, I love a year where it just feels like it's a celebration of all movies. So yeah. as we were saying, like Oppenheimer, Poor Things, Godzilla minus one, Boy in the Heron, Barbie, just because of how much it was talked about. Like it just really did feel like it was a very well rounded. God, we had such a great year. Yeah. Um, it didn't, you know. It felt like we got a really diverse group of people winning awards, which also yeah. felt really nice. Um, and then look, and where I disagree with Shannon is that I didn't think Emma Stone was going to win at all. 
I was like, it's absolutely going to be Lily Gladstone. And if it's not Lily Glanst Gladstone, it's Sandra Huller for Anatomy of the Fall. Like, that's how this is going to go. Wow. So when Emma Stone won, that was maybe my favorite moment of the night because I... I was marginally less surprised than Emma Stone clearly seemed to be, <laughs> yeah. but I was very surprised and I was pleasantly surprised because unlike Shannon, I think Poor Things is my favorite movie of the year. Wow. Um, okay. I think Poor Things is absolutely amazing. I think what Emma Stone did in that movie is ridiculously amazing. Her performance, yeah. I mean, and you know, I would argue with anybody and I think Lily Gladstone was great. I think it was a very tough category. There was really great performances across the board, hmm. but Emma Stone playing such a ridiculous role and watching this character mature and develop and grow as a human in real time from where she is at the beginning of the movie to where she is at the end of the movie, mm. I think is just a tour de force performance. And I think she absolutely deserved it. And even though Barbie and poor things were very evenly matched for production design, just the way that they used production design and poor things to tell the emotional story mm. and uh, to, to sort of do all of the things that they were doing to sort of visually tell the exact same story that was going on within Bella's journey, yeah. I think was really, really well thought out. And although Barbie production design is absolutely fantastic and bringing Barbie's world to life is a feat unto itself, yeah. uh, I absolutely think Poor Things deserved it. And then honestly, I mean, I know we'll talk a little bit about what people were upset about, yeah, but yeah. Get to that in next. memoriam yeah, let's talk about it. was let's a great moment it. to me because, and I didn't know quite why, like obviously Bocelli's a great singer. Yes. So that was beautiful. But I was like, he's good, but I've heard him sing this before. Why is this so good? Mm. And then I was on Spotify the next morning and I realized why it was so good because it was Andrea Bocelli and Hans Zimmer. Right. <laughs> and the Hans Zimmer scoring of that really takes it to the next level. And I've listened to that like 10 times in the past 24 hours. Yeah. Um, so I thought I thought it was really, really lovely. Yeah, I thought the show was a love letter to Hollywood and having Hans Zimmer come in to score just the in memoriam, I thought was a, a, another way to show that having the team, you know, a shout out to the Teamsters, yep. having all those people, the production people show up on stage, I thought was a wonderful tribute uh, to what happened during the strikes. And of course, the Teamsters are negotiating now. And uh, Shannon, what you brought up earlier, having the five previous winners or five five of the previous winners show up and deliver these speeches. I mean, America, for, uh, Rita Moreno, essentially oh. coronating America Ferrer, I thought was wonderful, was beautiful. Forrest Whitaker's love of Coleman Domingo, I thought was a really sweet back and forth. Christoph Waltz was hilarious in his delivery as well. Sir Ben Kingsley's love for Killian Murphy's approach to acting, I thought was awesome. Nicolas Cage giving all that love to Giamatti was so <laughs> Perfect. Would, would I do the lazy eyes? Absolutely, I would, and that's what makes it. <laughs> those, those little things that you that I think were so essential, and it was again a love letter back to Hollywood. I, you know, I see so many people get so upset about, oh, it's just a bunch of elites or or, or actors kissing their own asses. Yes, that's what it's called, the Oscars. Guess what? When you watch the NFL Football Hall of Fame, it's a bunch of athletes kissing their own asses, and you watch that anyway. So it's just – it's one night. It's three to four hours, and it's okay to celebrate these things. And the same people who complain about it are the same people who watch movies all the fucking time and quote movies all the fucking time. And you know why you do that? Because there's great creatives behind those movies entertaining you. So throw away that stuff and enjoy it. And I thought it was nice to go back to enjoying – the Oscars, instead of being ashamed of putting on the Oscars, yeah. is what I felt the last few years. Uh, let's move to the in memoriam, as Michael mentioned. I will say, I didn't like that you couldn't see the faces. To me, the dancers made no sense. It doesn't mean you can't have them. Have that for the audience. Have that for That's the for the audience. Exactly. Right? That's for the right? audience. But show us the faces. Show us the names. And I, I, I see a lot of people were offended at the end with all the names popping up. I think it would have been as offensive if we had left it there for a little while so if everybody could read the names and then they went to Black Friday and went to commercial. That was, I thought, the mistake. What did you think of the in memoriam, uh, Shannon? Yeah, I mean, I, I wanted to see because because we had the dancers and they were doing these, you know, wide shots of the stage. Mm. We we were missing a lot of the people that were be, that, that were being broadcast on the screen. Yeah, yeah. And for the audience at home, to me, that's the most important part of that section. Yeah. Um, you know, that great uh, the great kind of, you know, five, you know, uh, 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 slimmer screens that they used for yeah. the nominees. Um, 
that's what that's where they put some of the folks who weren't you know like movie stars mm -hmm. and it was like i understand like that's that that is a way to kind of crank some out and if you are a relative if you are a friend yeah. of one of those folks it's like oh that was great but in the past that's I don't feel like that's how it was. Like they, they kind of had, I mean, it might, it might've been a quick moment, um, mm. but they, they did have that moment with their name on that big screen. Yeah. Um, so even though I was like, that's, that's an interesting idea. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it was fully executed very well. Okay. And the dancers, again, I, I agree with you, John, the dancers, it looked like they were doing great work. Um, that was clearly there for the people in the theater, like the yeah. people in the audience the, who were watching at home. I, I think I think having the dancers overshadow the people that were being memorialized was a mistake. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Uh, anything more you want to add to that, Michael, we, uh, since you've kind of kicked us off in this conversation? Yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily. I, look, I think the in memoriam is a thankless task. I don't know how you do it and may and do anything with it. And if you just do kind of what you guys are saying, it yeah. just is the same old thing and you don't actually the issue they have is as much as we want to celebrate everyone who passed away mm. you have a limited amount of time in a show that always runs over anyway it's true so how do we get through all these people how do we get everybody up there how do we do it where we're not like I mean, we've all seen in memoriams where like everybody gets about like 1.2 seconds and mm. you're like well that was too fast so that doesn't work. Yeah. And then everyone sitting in the audience, it's like, well, how do we do something special for this in memoriam? How do we celebrate these people? So yeah. having one of the greatest singers of our of our time singing under one of the greatest composers of our time yeah. and adding the dancing, like modern dance that's expressing emotion, it's like, those all seem like good choices. Like, yes, did you did you have to squint a little bit? Maybe my eyes are better than yours, but like I could still see everybody who was up there. And I think <laughs> they did a decent job. Like, I think that getting into well you did this wrong and you didn't honor people and this was you didn't do this the right way i'm like eh. like i was like it it's a nice moment to celebrate people who have passed and the second mm -hmm. that we start telling everybody that you started doing it wrong it doesn't give people the freedom to explore and try and express mm -hmm. grief and sadness and honor and respect and i think doing something different with it was nice okay well, not everyone has jg's 82 inch television mike so some of us have to squint a little wow, bit that is that is fair watching the thing. Shannon, <laughs> shannon sitting watching it on an old eight inch screen with like the <laughs> rabbit ears who is that <laughs> Um, but we should get to one final thing as we wrap up because we're already at 27 minutes, but we got to talk about this moment. Hello, hello. <laughs> so, <laughs> Shannon, I got to go back to you on this one, man. I mean, Pacino came out. First of all, from what I hear from a couple of people, it was supposed to be Cher and Nicolas Cage reuniting for Moonstruck to deliver the best picture, but they ended up going with Pacino and, and Nicolas Cage moved over to the best supporting thing, but they brought Pacino out. He looked like he just got pulled out of a luncheon to walk up and deliver something to a local, a local a business or something, and then fumbled over and delivered it. Now, he apologized today. I saw some people like Simu Liu defending him, saying Pacino shouldn't apologize. And uh, people were just – people, I think, are upset that he just didn't just go, I'm here to present Best Picture. Uh, you heard all the nominees, and the winner is. Uh, he didn't have to list all the nominees, but not saying – and the winner is, and just going, my eyes see Oppenheimer. I think for me, I got so upset because I thought it was such a great ceremony, except for a couple of missteps up to that moment. What did you think about it, uh, Shannon, overall? Well, the nominees, not announcing the nominees, that wasn't his call. Right, no, <laughs> that was, was, that was the fair. producers. Yeah. And and to and to be fair, they did give each best picture nominee. They gave them a moment. Yeah, um, sure. I still think you should have announced the names. I, th I, I think mm. rattling off the names of 10 movies is not going to push, you know, push you um, incredibly over time that like especially, some other stuff, that other stuff, would. Have. especially when you know you're under time going into that moment. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the way, but yes, the way that he did it, that was just sort of like, ah, oh, he's an older guy, you know, <laughs> uh, but yes, I do agree. Like the, the buildup and the Oscar goes to ellipses, open envelope, this right. versus my IC Oppenheimer. <laughs> Um, I, I thought that was probably not the way to do it. I do like that they have a movie star or a big director sure. announce the bet. Like last year, it was Harrison Ford when Everything Everywhere All at Once won. Um, I do think the Everything Everywhere All at Once creative team delivered a better speech than the Oppenheimer team did. I mean, granted, Oppenheimer was on that stage a lot, but there was just such a joy and, 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 and enthusiasm when they won, 
whereas Oppenheimer was a little more, you could tell they were very excited, but it was yeah. just sort of like, yes, and, and then this happened. And then this happens like, ah, oh boy, the ship's going down. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I, I think Pacino is being unfairly dinged on one side and probably fairly dinged on the other. <laughs> Michael, your thoughts overall, are we making too much of this or do you think it was fine? Or do you think well, it was worse? Yes, everyone's making too much of it, but it was still like, do I, do I wish he actually got the word Oppenheimer out without sort of mumbling through it? <laughs> Absolutely. Like, sure. Like if I was, if I was the producer of the Oscars and I was backstage, I'd be like, Oh, you fucked that one up pretty bad. <laughs> um, but at the same time, it's one of those weird things where it's like, there's, there, there are a thousand that, well, there's probably about 90, what is this? The 96 Oscars. Yeah. So there's 94 Academy Award where somebody came out and said it right. Yeah. And you're never going to remember, for the most part, who came out and said, and the Oscar goes to. You're going to remember when they fucking fucked up with, with La La Land and Moonlight. Yes. We're going to remember it forever. And we will always remember Al Pacino going, my eyes see up and I'm <laughs> like, it's so, and you know what, isn't that what the movies are all about? Like it's, it was ridiculous. It was silly. And that's not the way you should do it. But people getting so upset and being like, he needs to apologize. And this was disrespect. Everybody calm down to your point about this is a bunch of Hollywood elites getting together and kissing their own ass for four hours. Like, sure it is. These are Hollywood's elites. Mm -hmm. They're going to a big party and getting dressed up. And we're all saying these were the best movies of the year. Yeah. That's what we signed up for. And some of those people are going to fuck up sometimes. <laughs> and we're going to love it. Yes. And, and, some of, and some of those people are going to come and win their first award and deliver wonderful speeches, which is what we, there's always the balance, you know, and I think that's what's always unfair when people say, hold hey, on, I'm hold on. on. My repairman is coming in because my toilet's oh. messed up. Okay. Come in, Edwin. Edwin, what do you think of Pacino when uh, announcing Best Picture? Edwin, did it work? <laughs> did it not work? Let us know, man. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think there were some beautiful speeches that were delivered uh, for first time. People who won, like Court Jefferson, other people who won, they were really moved. And uh, and I thought Emma Stone's speech was beautiful. Whether you and, and I'm with you, I'm, I'm I I think it was the right choice, honestly. At the end of the day, because I will say, I think Scorsese did her a dis disfavor by. Uh, by drugging her for an hour of the movie or 45 minutes of the movie, it didn't allow us to have more scenes. At least fill that time with visions that she's having, conversations that she's having with her ancestors, with, with a version of DiCaprio. You could have filled that time and taken license as a director to give her more to do, to deepen that character even more. That's not Lily's fault. That's why I think Lily delivered a wonderful performance. I just think Scorsese could have filled that time that would have had her go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Emma fully by the end. And clearly the Academy, although they respected Barbie, they didn't want to give Barbie almost any right. of the awards other than Best Song. Uh, and so that tells you where the Academy felt about this film. And by the way, this is the most diverse voting body the Academy's ever had. Both male and female numbers are high. Or sorry, female numbers are higher than ever. People of color, black people, higher than ever. So you can't really cry racism and compare it to the past. You got to deal with it as it currently is, and you may not like the decision, but that's how it went down. Have it in context, I guess. And, is what I'm trying. And to just say. keeping things yeah. in perspective, um, <clears throat> you know, Robert De Niro was on Kimmel last night, mm. and he was talking about the Oscars and. Kimmel and De Niro were comparing tweets that Trump has made about both of them, uh, <laughs> trying to decide which one was worse. And then Trump yeah. and then De Niro called Trump a fucking idiot. But uh, but one of the things De Niro <laughs> said is they were talking about the awards and he was like, look, Robert Downey Jr. is great. He totally deserved it. And he was like, I know this sounds stupid, but it really is true. Like getting nominated is great. Yeah. Like like having everybody go, hey, out of all the performances of the year, the five of you gave the best performances. Now, who gets the award is awesome. It's great to be an Oscar winner. Mm -hmm. You want to have that thing like, yes, obviously everybody wants to win. But Lily Gladstone, being the first indigenous person to ever be nominated, yeah. to get so much acclaim for her, like we get to this point where we get to the end of the road and Emma Stone gets the Oscar and everybody throws their hands up and says, this is a disaster, this is horrible. This is why everything's wrong with Hollywood. It's like, no, guys, it's the Oscars. It, yeah. it really matters a lot, and it also doesn't matter at all. Like Lily Gladstone's going to get work. She's going to be going. She's going to be oh, yeah. working a lot. Like this is not the days in the past where someone gets nominated yeah. and then they never work again. You know? Yeah. No. 
Well, um, I'm gonna make and, Shannon. I'm gonna make Shannon watch poor things like ten times <laughs> in the next year. It's like he's gonna he's gonna turn around on that thing eventually. It's on Hulu. <laughs> It's on Hulu. I, yeah. I got to get to the end first. <laughs> um, but but what I would say, even though I don't agree with, I didn't agree with the decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would. I, I think the some of the criticism that is being hurled in Emma Stone's way, I'm like, that is not right. Yeah. Like she she went out and did her job. She went yeah. out and 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 gave this performance that the majority of the voting body thought was the best. And so for anything to be kind of thrown her way, I'm like, yeah. that's dumb and not right. Yeah, she's been nominated five times, so clearly she's do, doing something right. She's won two of them, for God's sake. So people coming at her for that are just nonsense, absolute nonsense. She's a fucking good actress. She's not still doing super bad, y'all. Wake up. Um, all right, well, there you go. Also, I think she's and, great in super bad. Yeah, she is. Super bad's a great movie. It's not an Oscar winning performance, but yes, she's great in super bad. I'm just saying. Uh, and by the way, how many, um, you know, Jonah Hill being another one that's part of that crew that is getting was getting Oscar love. So maybe not such a bad movie. Um, thank you all so much for joining us. That's our overall thoughts here. Uh, any final words as we wrap up here? Michael, I go to you first, then Shannon, then we'll, we'll wrap it up here. Uh, final thoughts on the Oscars. Batman, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he threw me out a window. <laughs> Keep him going like this was the that... best. Ring it. I loved it. Please. Immediately green light yeah. that movie for fuck's sake. Yeah, a lot of love, a lot of love for the movies. And as everybody who listens to us knows, we have a lot of love for the movies. So yeah. I think for all of us, uh, despite not everybody winning that you wanted to, despite some flubs along the way, I think all three of us had a really, really great time. Absolutely. Shane. Paul Giamatti yeah. and I after uh, Dave I won Paul Giamatti walking her up to the oh, stage. I was like, beautiful. man, that's awesome. And and there were some very, very classy folks when their name wasn't read. There were a lot of classy folks in the audience. And I think that's 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 a great thing to see. Uh, Annette Benning not being one of them. She was death. Oh, my. She was dead. <laughs> But they're thinking, well, we really should we really should have made Margot Robbie the nominee. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say one thing with Giamatti, he was wearing, for those who didn't catch it, in and out cufflinks. So that was he was wearing that on his suit. So the sure man was. the man has awesome. class. Um all right, there you go. That's our overall thoughts here on the Oscars. Thank you so much for hanging out with us on this geek bite. Shannon, what do we have to tell him? Yeah, I'd like to follow us on social media. On Twitter, it's at geek underscore buddies. On Instagram, at the underscore geek underscore buddies. If you'd like to follow me on social media, on Twitter, it's at Shannon underscore McClung. On Instagram, at Shannon the Geek Buddy. If you'd like to follow Mr. Vogel, it is at MK2. And if you would like to follow Mr. Roca, it is at the Roca Says. Mikey? Um, while you're doing all that following, you can also smash that like button below. Subscribe to Johnny's Outlaw Nation page. Check out all the amazing content he has got there. Leave your comments below. What did you think of the Oscars? What made you happy? What made you mad? What movies do you love? Is Shannon right about poor things, or am I? Let us know <laughs> below in the comments. If you're listening to us on a podcast, leave us some stars and some comments so we go up in the rankings. And as always, the best thing you can do is retweet this video, post it on your social, send it to your friends, and tell them to hang out with your buddies, the Geek Buddies. There you go. All right, thank you all so much, and we'll talk to you later on this week with another brand new main show episode coming from the Geek Buddies! Geek Buddies! <gasps>